Thanks. Strategically, you look like you were really on your game today. I mean, I think I think that's a good way to put it. I mean, going into it, it was really all about like race awareness and trying to be present during the race, you know? I mean, that's something that's really hard to do when you're really maxing out in your effort, you know? But like, yeah, it was all about being strategic. I wanted to put in as little work as I could. Like, I wanted to, like, you know, optimize my efficiency right up until I had to really go for it. And that meant, you know, tucking behind people, even if it meant I wasn't leading, or if it meant I wasn't, um, even in the top six, like specifically, I just wanted to make sure that I was like, you know, dodging the wind and holding my ground to make sure I was safe. And then, um, yeah, honestly, I wasn't even going into it. It wasn't like, the goal wasn't necessarily like, when it obviously it's like, if I can, I want to, but like, it was like, play it safe. Let's try to get that top six. Let's try to get that bid to Australia. And then towards the end, I was, to be honest, so worried that that whole pack was going to come up and overtake all the guys that thought they were safe for six. Because going in right about after like after 7K or 6K, we were like, oh shoot, we only have six. I was like, there's only six guys. I even yelled it out. I was like, guys, there's only six of us. We we're like, oh, nice. And um, yeah, but I wasn't sure if that was going to stay. So then I was like, okay, let me just keep going. Let me go, go, go. And then I was like, oh shoot, I should try to win this thing. Let's do this. Let's do this. And it was fun. I mean, those guys made it so much fun. It was, I'm so thrilled to travel with them. How, how good is this for, uh, uh, for you, you know, uh, uh, following December, yeah. just, you know, whatever the next race was going to be, whatever the next outlet was going to be, you know, just to kind of re remind everyone that it's like, yeah. you know, that you are who you are and you are what you've been the entire fall in your entire career. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think this was like a big thing, obviously, like, for one reason or another, like, you know, cross season wasn't exactly how we initially anticipated it. And I mean, that's okay. You're, you're in the sport, you're not in the sport to win every race, you're in the sport to like, to push yourself and prove to yourself how hard you can work. And that's, I think, what today was an example of. And I think that, I don't know, there's so much more, more, so many more fun races to come, and I'm just so thrilled. Was today's race plan, did you learn, I mean, was it a direct offshoot of NXN? Like, did you learn I shouldn't be leading in the wind? Um, I mean, I think that, you know, looking back on NXN, obviously that was a big theme, was leading into the wind, you know, and that was tough. I knew the kind of toll that was took my body, um, but I wouldn't say I stuck out of the lead just because of that. I think a lot of it came down to this being an 8K, um, there was a huge field of men that were older than me, you know, and like, but the biggest thing is I've never run an AK before. I didn't know how my body was going to react. I didn't know how I was going to feel five kilometers into the race. And I just wanted to make sure that I had as much as possible, you know, like five kilometers or seven kilometers into the race so that I could really make sure that I could finish it. So that's really what it came from. We're big fans of World Cross, but what made what made you want to be on that team instead of doing a track season? Um, I mean, have you seen how sick the USA singlets are? Um, how incredible of experience it is to represent your country in a race? I mean, like, that's exactly what it is. Like, I want to run for Team USA someday, like on the Olympic team or a world team. And I feel like a junior team is exactly how you get there. And I don't know, I could not be, I could not be more thrilled about this opportunity. And what about your brother Lex? I heard he's been out and missed some time, but. Yeah. I mean, man, that kid, I mean, he had one hell of a race. You, it's hard to go out there with such, with the lead that he had. Cause the thing is, is like, for him, he's, he's the kind of kid who's like, he's gonna give it his all no matter the situation. Um, like going into this, like right after NXN, he started to have like a hip, a hip issue that took him out. Then he got his wisdom teeth out and he couldn't even train for a little while. And that, after that, then his knee was hurting and he only started like actually running like a week and a half ago or something like that. I think going into this race, his longest run was like seven miles. And he was just like, He's, he, he was like, okay, I'm gonna travel regardless. He's technically entered in the race. And then like yesterday, he was like, even if I even if I blow up, I know I'd be so mad at myself if I didn't give it a go. So that's that's exactly, I think, what, what he was looking at. And I think, I don't know, I think it's a specific result, but it looked like he did pretty darn good. Mm -hmm. For you to have this vision all the way back during the summer, right? That it's like, you yeah. know, we're gonna be very efficient and very quality, you know, in, in the fall, because you always had eyes yeah. on January, you had eyes on February. How, how satisfying is it that, that all those pieces came together for you? I mean, it's incredibly satisfying. I mean, we trained with this in mind and when the things didn't go perfectly, you know, stay me, NXN, and whatnot, all that kind of stuff. Like it was a little bit discouraging because from the wide public eye, like it looked like it, lo it made it seem like, you know, like we were, we were failing in some ways. And that's, and that's really tough. I think one part about this race that made it so much fun was that you didn't, it wasn't a high school race. So you didn't have that same, that same like pressure to like, to lead every second of it. You know, it was like, it's, it's a race with a, with a majority of college athletes, which meant that like, if I was just hanging out in seventh place, people aren't like, what the heck? Why isn't he leading it? You know, it's like, oh yeah, he shouldn't be leading it. He's a high schooler. So it was good. It took the pressure off and it meant that like, I could really just have fun with it. You know, I could enjoy it. And that's what I tried to do. So with this being your first race against people with college jerseys on, 
how do you think that sets you up for next year, next cross season, when you're going to have that expectation with Stanford across your chest? Yeah, I mean, I think that it'll set me up really well because I think that like when I step on the line for my first like for my, for my first collegiate 8th period or 10K, it won't feel so daunting, uh, and I think that I'll feel a little bit more like I'll feel like I have a place there on that field versus like you know I feel like a lot of football yeah, freshmen yeah, go into it. And there's guys that literally are like, they're like 25 years old. And you're like, oh my goodness, like you're terrified. And that can be super daunting. I feel like obviously it's still going to be terrifying, but I feel like because I was able to have such a great experience here and race a bunch, a bunch, uh, race against a bunch of really nice college guys, um, I think that'll be a little less scary. All right, off topic, I'm an identical twin, you're a twin. Who's the younger twin in y'all's family and, and yeah. what's the age gap? Um, I'm the younger twin. All right, I think it's, there we I think go. It's like a minute. Yeah. One minute, wow. Something like that. I don't know. All right. Exactly. Okay.